Hello, my little Luxes. This is another episode of Luxie Charms, and I'm your host, cosplayer Charcy Lux. And today I am dressed on theme for today's movie review. Hello once again, and if you are brand new to my channel, welcome. All weirdos and freaks are welcome here. And today is kind of a special day because one, I get to talk about what the month of March's theme is. And if you can't tell by my look here, very Irish looking, very leprechaun y type idea, that this month's theme is going to be unlucky souls and i'm excited to announce this one that this one is going to revolve around irish horror stories irish horror movies or just irish folklore in general now we know last year for saint patrick's day i had celebrated it by giving the entire franchise of leprechaun a whole movie review for all eight films down below, I will set a link for that video if you have an interest in watching it. But I wanted to continue the theme for St. Patrick's Day because on my mom's side of the family, we have Irish bloodline. So of course, I am happy to dive into my heritage. And let's face it, some of the freakiest folklore out there revolves around Irish tales and old pagan stories. And the movie that I'm going to be reviewing today is on brand with that. So today I am doing a movie review on the 1986 film Rawhead Rex. I almost said Rawhide Rex. That is not right at all. Stop it. Get some help. Rawhead Rex. I'm excited to be talking about this film today due to the fact that I it's been a while since I've talked about an older film and this one is going to be pretty special for several reasons and we will get on topic with that as we do our movie review on this film. As always, I'm going to give a spoiler alert so if you have not seen this film, please be forewarned that spoilers are ahead and this is also viewer discretion advised. And it's important for me to start off by giving the cast and the crew of the film. You have David Dukes as Howard Hollenbeck, Kelly Piper as Elaine Hollenbeck, Hugh O'Connor as Robbie Hollenbeck, Cora Venus Looney as Minty Hollenbeck, Ronan Wilmont as Declan O'Brien, Niall Tobin as Reverend Coote, Niall O'Brien as Detective Gissen, Henrik von Solendorf as Rawhead Rex, Donald McCann as Tom Guerin, Finbar Lynch as Andy Johnson, Maeve Germain as Katrina, and Simon Kelly as Neil Johnson. Director is George Pablo, and writer is Clive Barker. And as always, I apologize if I mispronounced anyone's names. And I'm going to give a very quick plot synopsis, the storyline for this film, through trusty IMDB because they are quick and more to the point than what I am because there are some times where I will just talk at length about certain movies. I love story times and I love talking about horror so we're just gonna use the uh, storyline from IMDB today. Writer Howard Hellenbeck is spending his vacation in the countryside of Ireland with his wife Elaine and their children researching legends and myths for his book. Meanwhile, a farmer is trying to remove an old column on the field and accidentally unleashes the evil pagan god, Rawhead Rex, who begins a crime spree in the village where Howard and his family are lodged. 
and the tagline for this film is he's pure evil pure power pure terror i guess there's two other taglines that go with this one someone has awakened him and he lives again to feed again now we get to go into my favorite part of the movie reviews well for me anyways I love this part because this is when I get to deep dive and give basically my full synopsis of the film. So you open up in the old Irish countryside of this little village where Howard and his family are there for a vacation, but it's not just a vacation, it's actually work for him due to the fact that he is exploring the village to see old legends, old myths, from the Irish folklore and that he's doing a book on the area. And it's funny when you first see the movie open up that it goes to the farmland where you see a farmer and two of his friends trying to take a tractor and remove this large totem looking item from the ground. And right away I'm thinking, this seems like a bad idea. Are you stupid or something? This is a totem. This is something that is meant to be there and it should not be moved. Obviously because of superstitions and everything like that, that they should have heeded warning and probably shouldn't have touched it. Obviously this farmer wanted to remove this from his field so that he had more room to plant crops. Well, his two friends, his buddies, give up and they leave and they want to go to dinner for the evening and of course he curses his friends because they are leaving him behind to worry about the work by himself it's not going to move garen uh, dennis is right give up maybe doesn't look too healthy well i better be getting back dinners on the table thanks anyway well he also doesn't give up he decides that he's gonna keep working away at this stone until he can get rid of it well it just so happens that a storm comes rolling in while he thinks he's going to get this stone removed and you get the atypical for a horror movie you get the lightning and it strikes down onto this stone and smoke and steam come out from below and it releases the monster that is trapped beneath this stone and this poor farmer doesn't stand a chance because it is raw head rex <laughs> kills this poor farmer who becomes his first victim. Meanwhile, at the same time, you have Howard who is at this old church in this small village and he's taking pictures of tombstones. And these are very beautiful, unique tombstones. Like, they are gorgeous. And it's weird to say that about a tombstone, but these have very Celtic looking symbols on them and they are, they're just very beautiful headstones but he's exploring the graveyard and writing down just notes for himself and taking pictures where his son meets up with him and is complaining to him because they want to go back to the hotel and that he was sent to get his father. Well, obviously the father says, give me about five to 10 more minutes before I will meet you at the hotel. Tell her about 10 minutes, okay? She's mad with you. Oh, all right, all right. Just uh, tell her five. Look, I have to see somebody in the church about this site, okay? And a storm begins, which is the same storm that was going on when the farmer was trying to get rid of the totem. So, of course, it is raining at the exact same time for Howard while he's exploring at the church. So he goes indoors and he starts looking at the stained glass windows. These stained glass windows, you can tell, are not of Christian origin. Even though this is now a Christian church, the stained glass windows were originally from the pagan village 
and it used to be a pagan church. One of the stained glass windows has a very distinct window pane that's showing Rawhead Rex while he's being buried underneath this tombstone. Obviously Howard takes great interest in these windows and starts exploring, and he wants to meet up with the one reverend, who is Reverend Coot. He was going to ask him for permission to look at the church records, and of course he didn't want to take them without asking permission first, but unfortunately he ends up meeting Declan before he meets the reverend, and Declan's odd to begin with. That's putting it mildly. He says but when Howard leaves to go meet up with Reverend Coot, Declan has some very strange things that are happening where at some point, because Rawhead Rex was just brought back to life, he was able to hold power over this Declan guy and that he literally brainwashes him and he loses his mind and becomes a servant of Rawhead. We'll get more into that as we go along. So you continue the story with obviously you have Raw Head Rex now who's on a rampage and come to find out that technically he's supposed to be the devil and that all he wants to do is just wreak havoc on everything and kill everything in sight. So now he's going from farmhouse to trailer park to just different areas in the town where he's just killing people in very violent different ways. The only one that he did not kill though was a pregnant woman at the farmhouse. He killed her husband, Dennis, but came after her, but in the long run and in the end he did not kill her. So it's first bringing up suspicion because of the fact like I said she was pregnant. So what about this was important? that Rawhead Rex did not kill her. You continue on to where obviously when he's in the trailer park and he goes after a young teenage couple who thinks that they want to be outside. Well, I should say the girl just wanted to be outside and to talk with her boyfriend. Well, he kept forcing himself upon her even though she kept saying, no, I just want to talk. but would pull the stupid line from him where he would say, Oh, stop playing hard to get. We already know how I feel about that shit. No, don't like that. But, so, they are out in the forest. Weird shit starts happening, and they come across the dead body of Dennis, the farmer from before, and while they are running to try and get to help, Rawhead Rex ends up getting a hold of the male in the group, who was Andy, and obviously very violently kills and beheads Andy. But now since the police have been called, and now are officially at the trailer park trying to question people and find out what's going on, well at the same time, Rawhead Rex is wandering out in the field carrying Andy's head. Well, it just so happened that Howard was taking a walk outside to have a smoke break because they were all awakened due to the fact of hearing sirens and this is supposed to be a peaceful little village. So he decides to take a walk and kind of explore and see what was going on. Well, he ends up from across the field up a hill. He could see Rawhead and he was holding this head. being very spooked by what he saw and also finding out that there were several murders that had happened and that's why the sirens were going on, Howard decides to be very smart and go to the police and let them know, hey, I saw something very odd, very strange the other night. And of course, when he starts explaining what he saw to the police, he said he saw a creature that was at least eight to nine feet tall and that there was no way that this thing was human and that it had glowing red eyes. And of course, 
the police just start making fun of him and saying that there is no possibility that this is even real and that his eyes deceived him. He had just saw a cow in the field. He didn't see anything like what he was describing. <coughs> Howard takes offense to this and just walks out of the police station saying, so be it, I'm not giving you a statement or anything then since you don't believe me. But that was around the time where his wife Elaine had worked it out with him like, hey, can we go to Dublin now? That hopefully he had enough research for what he needed. She didn't want to be in the peaceful countryside anymore, and especially with all these murders going on, I don't think anybody should feel comfortable keeping their family there. They pack up and they start heading out. Well, on the route, the daughter, Minty, decides that she really needs to go to the bathroom. We have to stop. Why, honey? I gotta pee. This is kind of a weird scene anyways, because they stop and, you know, to take the poor little girl out in the mi middle of the countryside to go to the bathroom, which is not a big deal, because, I mean, they're in the middle of nowhere and that there's no possibility of them stopping somewhere for her to go to the bathroom. The mother was just going to let the little girl just go out into the field herself to go to the bathroom and not go with her. Obviously the dad objects and he says, you know what, I'm gonna go with her. And because he had asked the mom, he's like, hey, can you go with her so she's not by herself? And the mom just shrugs it off and says, she has to grow up sometime. Okay, uh, wanna go with her? Oh, she's okay on her own. Go on, Minty. Where? In the field, nobody will see you. Come on, sweetheart, we haven't got all day. I'm gonna go with her. She's okay. I know, I She's know. She's gotta grow up sometime, you know. But not till I'm good and ready. Well, obviously the father disagrees and goes with Minty. It's very odd that the mom is so nonchalant about it because Minty has only gotta be about like five or six years old. Well, it ends up that while she is going to the bathroom, you hear this terrified little scream coming from Minty. So the father and the mother, who was inside the van, heard it as well. Both go running to her rescue to find out that she is going to the bathroom next to a dead rabbit. And this, of course, terrifies the poor little girl. While the parents are comforting the little girl and helping her out, Rawhead Rex shows up at the van and the little boy Robbie is there by himself. When the father finally realizes what's going on and he can hear Robbie screaming for help, it's too late. He goes to help out his son, but Rawhead has already attacked and killed Robbie and has taken his body. How's mommy? Oh, mommy okay, okay now? <sighs> No, it's okay. Crows are very bad things. Oh, poor little bunny. It's hard to have. This in turn gets the family that they have to go back into town, report what had happened to Robbie, and you get to the big scene where Howard is just reaming the police a new asshole because he had come to them and he had tried telling them what this creature was, but nobody had believed him at the time. Now they're starting to believe him more because of a little boy who was at the trailer park who had witnessed this creature as well. This poor boy had gone mute since he had seen the creature and scared the shit out of him. When he was given crayons and paper to draw with, he drew this strange creature and it just so happened to look just the same as Howard's description of it. So now the police are starting to believe him. Of course, this just angers Howard and basically tells the police that they're idiots and incompetent. Stop it! So you continue through the storyline and Rawhead Rex is just wreaking havoc everywhere. He'll even go back to the trailer park, but he wreaks havoc and he starts killing a bunch of people, lighting things on fire, and the police keep trying to come after this creature. Well, this creature, whatever he is, devil, pagan god, whatever he is, he is able to take over the mind of Detective Gissing, the same man who didn't want to help Howard before, but now, 
while he thinks he would be able to fight this creature, it brainwashes him and now he has to do Rawhead's bidding. He is master. Do not call me master. He is master. Mm. Till we get to the ending of the movie, where the writer Howard keeps going back to this church because he knows that there's something important about the stained glass windows, that they tell a story, and that they tell how you can kill and stop Rawhead Rex. Well, he finally figures out that from Reverend Coote that the stained glass windows had been damaged a long time ago, around the late 1800s. They had tried to put these stained glass windows back together, but they hadn't done it successfully. So that's when Howard starts realizing that there were pieces on separate windows, and he finally figures out that there's supposed to be some kind of a weapon that can be used against Rawhead, but they needed to find this weapon. I can't find it. Will you help me find it? Well, by the end of the movie, when they are all back at the church again, and Rawhead is back and fighting the villagers, and you have the brainwashed detective who decides to take a whole bunch of gasoline and lights all the police and the poor villagers that are there on fire and kills everyone. But then you have Howard who finally figures out that the same altar that had somehow brainwashed Declan has this weapon inside of a chest and it's a little sculpture of a pregnant woman. This symbolizes for the fact of why Rawhead was so afraid of the pregnant woman because the one thing that can actually take control over him is technically birth, life itself. So this little totem was what his fear was. I knew it. And Howard takes this totem and he rises it above his head in the same manner that it showed in the stained glass window, but it didn't activate the stone and nothing happened. So Rawhead, of course, keeps going after Howard. Howard's wife Elaine shows up and it's just in the nick of time and she sees this totem on the ground and realizes that this was supposed to be the weapon. So her recognizing what to do with it, she takes it and picks it up and holds it over her head. And because she is a woman, she is able to activate this totem. And the spiritual woman that is inside of this stone uses its power. And with flashing lights and magic, it is able to overtake Rawhead Rex. And he is buried in a tombstone down below. A woman. It had to be a woman. You get to where the brother of Andy, the teenage boy whose head was removed from the trailer park, in the graveyard area and laying flowers at his brother's gravestone. Well, while the boy is walking away from the graveyard, you have Rawhead Rex who rips himself out of the ground. You have to have those little endings like that for horror movies. Is the creature dead? No, it's coming back again. Surprise, motherfucker. Now I wanted to give a bunch of fun facts that I learned through my research about this film was that this was written by Clive Barker and this was the film just before he did Hellraiser. When he had wrote the film he had obviously written the original screenplay and everything but he didn't play a large part in the actual filming and everything. When the movie came out he wasn't happy with the results of Rawhead Rex and how he had looked because he technically was supposed to look like a nine foot scary phallic looking symbol with teeth type idea. And of course the thing that could destroy it would be a pregnant woman. I knew it! But it ended up to where they spent about four weeks working on Rawhead's costume and Clive Barker because of what happened in this film and his disappointment and how the creature ended up looking like that he didn't like that it was this ogre troll looking like creature. We get the following year, Hellraiser, 
and Barker decided to be way more involved in that film and stayed on set and made sure that his influence was way more involved with Hellraiser. And of course we know exactly how those turned out. Right. This film was also during the freezing cold winter, but it's supposed to be more look like the fall time, I believe. And to keep consistency, any time that there was snow on the ground, I guess they would actually use hoses and water to get rid of any semblance of snow from the ground and would get it removed for the scenes that they needed to do. The director, George Pablo, wanted to give a small homage to the woman in the red coat from the horror film Don't Look Now. Because there's a scene where Howard and Elaine are just making out in front of the town and a woman in red comes upon them and passes by and Elaine says that she recognizes the woman, that there's something about her that she finds familiar. So that was a throwback to the movie Don't Look Now. I'm gonna butcher his name so I'm gonna look at it so I don't butcher it, but it is Henrik von Schollendorf was the actor who was Rawhead Rex and he was only 19 years old when he did this role and for two months before filming this he worked out consistently to get himself in shape to play the character. So I thought that was pretty cool and I mean that makes perfect sense that Rawhead Rex is this big buff guy. And the sequence towards the end of the movie where the villagers and the cops are on fire, that scene was actually filmed in two days, so took a lot of intricate work and probably uh, several times and several takes to get the appropriate film that they needed for the scene. <laughs> and a major difference between that this is based off of a book, Howard's character in the book, his name is Ron, Ron is actually able to use the talisman, whereas in the film it was only a woman that could use and activate this talisman. But I liked and appreciated that that was the idea in the film, and it was funny because when he was holding it, like the whole time in my brain, even before the scene happened, I kept thinking, I feel like it's not gonna work for him. I felt that it needed to be a woman that was holding the talisman. Sure enough, that's exactly what they ended up doing for the scene. It made sense in my head, because like I said, I was already thinking it before the scene was even happening. And then when the talisman didn't work for Howard, it's like, oh, I bet I know what's gonna happen. And sure enough, when his wife shows up, I'm like, I knew it. I knew where they were going with this. So it made perfect sense to have it be that way. Now we get to move into what are my thoughts on this film, what are my recommendations, and I do like this film. This is one of those where it is cheese, 1980s cheese. There's no food as sharp or as good as cheese. Clive Barker had said himself he wasn't impressed how Rawhide ended up looking because it was a latex skinned suit type idea and that obviously it made Rawhead look more like a troll character, an ogre, and that wasn't his idea. And it was weird because when I was seeing his character, I kept thinking, God, this just makes me think of Ernest Scared Stupid and the trolls for that, so it makes sense. <laughs> that wasn't Clive Barker's idea. He really wanted the creature to be way more scary looking, and obviously because of what happened in this film, is what developed and what became of Hellraiser and why Clive Barker got so much more involved in the films that he was writing. And there were several scenes in this movie that I disliked. The ending scene, it was fantastic, really cool scene. Because in the 1980s, the special effects that they had to come up with, obviously you need to be creative and they had the idea of double exposure and that kind of ideas for their editing but the scene at the end where Elaine is holding up the totem and it's destroying Rawhead Rex it's a little long it's a beautiful scene it's really cool it's really awesome with the lights and everything it's just it's too long for some editing and everything that it could have been just a little bit shorter just a little bit and I also kind of mentioned before that I thought it was really, really weird when Elaine's character was not wanting to go help her daughter go to the bathroom in the middle of a field, especially when there's been a whole bunch of murders going around in the area. What the fuck? What the fuck? 
she's saying the line for a five to six year old girl that she needs to grow up sometime and be on her own. Uh, it just, it's weird. I feel like if I had children, the last thing on my mind would be, hey, there's been some murders going on in the area. Let me just let my child go out in the middle of the field by herself. What? What the fuck? I, I don't know. <laughs> so, and there were other things too where even Clive Barker had mentioned himself. Some of the acting was a little too over the top, but there were scenes where it worked. It's the scene at the police station where Howard, who's played by David Dukes, has that blow up on the police and everything. And I want to give David huge props for that scene because as over the top as it was, it was shot beautifully because that is exactly how any parent would react after losing their child. Wait, wait for what? More your mistakes, more slaughter? Look, Mr. Hallenbeck, we understand how you feel. You have no idea how I feel! Your goddamn stupidity is the reason my son is dead. And the fact that the police did not heed warning from Howard at all. He does that scene so amazingly, so I want to give props for the overacting on that part. But there were certain parts, and I don't know why, it was usually generally around Elaine's character that there were certain things that were driving me up the wall. And it's, it's nothing against her, because she acted the scenes beautifully herself. It's just there were certain parts, and like I said, the part where she didn't want to go help her daughter. When the daughter screams and both parents are there comforting her, I'm thinking the whole damn time, because this child is petrified of this dead rabbit, they don't remove her from the scene. They're standing there with this dead rabbit at this girl's feet, and this is where they're comforting her. They're not picking her up and removing her from the scene and taking her back to the van. No, we're, we're just going to comfort her right next to the thing that is scaring the shit out of her. But in turn, because of them both being there, obviously that is what gets their son Robbie killed. But all in all, I enjoy this film. So for my recommendations, I do recommend it. It's one of those old classics, especially if you are a Clive Barker fan, you should give this a watch. And like I said, this is just the step. This is just the year before Hellraiser came out. And then we know exactly how that franchise blows up and it's still going today. So yes, I recommend this film. This is one of those where I have a lot of opinions on it, but this one was a very fun film and I did enjoy the over-the-top acting, but at the same time some scenes were pretty ridiculous and really really silly, but that's what made this movie very fun. And I love seeing movies like this because you can see the tradition in this small Irish village and I want to say that the scenes and the settings are just stunning and so beautiful, especially the scenes where the family is driving through the countryside and it's just gorgeous. So I love seeing things like that. And as always, Kelly and I would like to thank you for joining us here on another Luxie Charms and thank you for joining us for a movie review of an older film. So thank you so much for joining me and let me know in the comments down below. Have you seen this one? What do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? What were some of your favorite scenes or your least favorite? She's going to do this to me every single day. <laughs> if you have an interest in following me on my other social medias, you can follow me on my Twitter for Charcy Lux with three X's, or you can follow me on my Instagram for Charcy87. And once again, thank you so much for joining me here and for joining the conversation. Like I said before, this month's theme is unlucky souls and we're gonna dive deep into talking about different Irish folklore and horror stories and the big one that I'm going to do for this month's horror. Do you mind? Give me just a minute.
Just a minute. So needy that for this month's ghost story, we're going to be talking about the folklore of raw head wrecks and bloody bones, which I have to thank my buddy Tommy for giving me the information for that because I didn't realize this was based on the true story. So yay, we're going to have fun with that. But no matter what time of the day it is, my little Luxus, I hope you have a Luxie Charms kind of day. Bye. And obviously, because of super this year, they're they're gorgeous, gorgeous. So now he has to do raw hides, raw hides. And for another horror movie review, just in time for my cat to start scratching at the door. Let me go get her. Where'd you go? I just let you in. I'm not gonna let you out right away. Come here. Come join. Come say bye. She might as well say bye with me, considering she had to be in here. <laughs> I don't know where I left off, so I will just start over. <laughs> I'm lost now. Hi, baby.